why do so many companies create that with little value from any contacts and any data? Um, my key example is probably everybody of you works in a, in a company using a customer relationship system. And I could normally bet, because I've never met any company who could automatically see if the CEO of a customer is at the same time in the supervisory board of a uh, different company. There's not even one company who has this very, very tiny insight, which is quite easy to have, and which brings great insights if you offer special prices to, to see whether um, if you, the one company will transfer all the new agreements to the other company. And we said, why is it so, it's so easy? Why does nobody, oh, everybody has only contacts of persons, of companies, and not any relations between them? And then, the next question is, if you would have it, if you had, ha would have relations within your customers, why wouldn't, don't you like relations between your customers and the all other companies outside of your companies? Because there are so many companies which are highly interlinked and interwinked with their customers from the customer perspective, from a person's perspective. And that breaks easy a lot of, of insights. Just for example, um, this is a very, very easy use case, which was not one of the six use cases we saw in the keynote. We are not fraud, we are not meds and so on. It's just a sales and marketing purpose, where you just see, you have a very easy example, the CEO of one company can introduce you, of one customer can introduce you to another customer and bring you a warm introduction, which helps most times a lot. But we will come back to that in a minute, if I, when I show you later on, in a practical way, how we solve this issue um, from a technical point of view. And the next question is today, it's so easy, there's so many companies who focus on, the, it's a very good example on booking a hotel or a flight, it's so easy. There are, every day there's new companies setting up who try to, uh, um, with a story to say, we have the best way to search a hotel, to get the cheapest flight, to get the, bit, uh, the, the cheapest trip, whatever, but in the Customer perspective in the B2B business, when, cust when normal companies like, for example, Neo4j try to get new customers, there's hardly any solution available. Everybody buys some addresses, sends mailings, goes to conferences. It's quite stupid. It's quite like it was 10 years ago. Everybody focuses on using Facebook, using Twitter for any sales activities. You can hardly measure how good they are. And, um, but there's hardly any solution for the B2B business. And that all was... Um, the key point why we set up this company, where we said we want to change this piece of how people, uh, how companies make business. We want to set up the European Business and Decision Maker Network. That means a network with all companies, with all persons, with all representatives of the first management level, second management level, the shareholders and the, and the um, supervisory board to show how they are all interlinked, how they are dependent to each other. On the one hand, for fraud patterns, that's of course an easy case, which is quite standard in the Neo4j world, but even more for the sales and marketing purpose, because we have made the experience that every company can leverage the effectiveness of the sales activity massively using the, the graph-oriented approach on handling customer data and lead data. And how we do that, I'll show you in a second. And this is an example of my former company. Of course, it's always a very, very good example for me because I know all the data and know a lot of things. And we think if you just combine data about the nodes and about the relations between the nodes, you get, by quite simple cipher queries, um, a lot of insights into the networks. So we are using... So, so what you see is... The key of our company is that we, at the moment we use Neo4j and graph databases for getting the possibility to show relations and dependencies between the customers on a graphical interface, which means, I'll show you in a second, you can click through all the, um, um, through the network using key lines. Perhaps somebody of Tom Sawyer is here. I'm sorry, we are using key lines. <laughs> You're from key lines? Yes, that's right. Okay, we're using key lines, not Tom Sawyer. Sorry for that for the key lines, as Tom Sawyer as a top sponsor, as I saw here, <laughs> which is probably the alternative for that, but now we have the key lines approach. 
um, which helps us to show the network of the system. But before I come to the technical architecture and everything, how we solved is using Neo4j, I will show you in a second the application because I think then some more um, things become much more touchable for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them anytime because I love to have a dialogue about this. So um, when we started the product project, we worked 15 years with Oracle Relational Database and we got a lot of the limitations. Most of them were two kind of limitations. The one thing is the write operations on the database are far too slow. That was our, one of our problem of Oracle databases. And the other thing was it was really time consuming calculating through the relations of the entities and the companies. And when we set up our new set system, we said we need to handle both of these issues and therefore, we created an architecture which uses, on the one hand, a Cassandra key value store for really, really fast write operations in the database. So there are some times where we import some 10 million data sets a day, which must be really, really fast. And obviously, Oracle is too slow for that. Um, then we had this, um, and for the for for using them um, for showing the relations of all the nodes. Of, as I said, we use, of course, Neo4j. That was, was um, that's what I said. Additionally, we use for searching, not Neo4j, we use Solar from Apache, a Solar approach which was much more performant than um, the search at the beginning of Neo4j. Perhaps I think I heard it's now much faster, but at the beginning it was um, not fast enough for us getting all the results out of the graph database. And, um, and this key architecture of using Neo4j, Cassandra, and um, Solar. Now um, we use Spark as well for optimizing the approach to Cassandra. And um, but I show you in a second. But this architecture was the key of our application at the beginning. And then we have just added a front end um, using um, which which is now connected to all the systems. I show you now in the. But we are now back to the presentation, right? Yeah. I want, didn't want the presentation, yes? Just a question. Where does your data come from? What sources do you ingest? Yes. So what we have, we have right now our data are only from Germany, and we're currently expanding to Poland, Austria, Switzerland, and UK. We have in Germany the trade register data, which is the um, house of companies in the UK, I think. All messages since 1991 from the nearly last 25 years where we can derive all, like, like a CV of a company. When was the company founded? When did they move the address? Who entered the company as CEO? When does he leave as a second management level? You have all the information because some kind of information must be published. We have all the texts. Today we crawl the texts and we update that every 15 minutes. The messages are parsed and imported in the system. That's one source. It's just the the, the backbone of the data of the data is all companies which are currently active and a lot of inactive companies which are very important for us as well. And we support these data with all kind of institutions where we think where the decision makers can come together. Um, that means, for example, we have all the parliaments, all the trade associations, um, lobby associations with every single board in every lobby association who is a member of this. And for example, parties, health insurance, universities, we grab them all. Most data, some data are grabbed by crawlers, but most are keyed manually in Africa, in Laos, in Poland. We have data centers where people are sitting and really keying data the whole day. They get URLs and they have to key it because it's not possible or not. It's possible, but not, it's not economically possible to get the data automatically because every website is different. You have to adopt the parser for every website. And we have set up an infrastructure of a huge data capturing team in countries where they like to have these jobs and where we can afford this. And, um, <laughs> and through all these commercial registers, we have, all annual re we have 3 million annual reports for every company in Germany. You have the annual reports. Um, press releases, official websites. We have a lot of sources, where we, which is the key of our database. And out of this database, of course, you get relations like this person is CEO of this company. And then we develop the so, um, like social network algorithms where we say, just easily speaking, um, 
if two guys are together, together at the management board of a company at the same time, they know each other. And the, the management board always knows the supervisory board, the members of the supervisory board. Of course, they know each other as well. And the members of the supervisory board mostly are in the board of another company. And there, you can, we developed a social network, which is now by far the biggest social network of decision makers in Germany. We are currently expanding into Europe because we have all the decision makers. It's public. It's, we have only public data. All data we have are publicly available. Um, and um, with the algorithms, we, we, um, with our proprietary social network algorithms, we create like a, like a LinkedIn, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's official true, I would say. It's not like um, after a conference like this, everybody has probably 30 new LinkedIn contacts. And next year, you don't know who this guy was. So a lot of people have many, many contacts, and you, every day you get alerts which birthday is today, and you don't know who was this guy or this girl, whatever. And in our database, we have official data, which is this guy is at this point at this board together with other people. And there's a rule set. If there are, for example, only five, we assume they know each other. If there are hundreds, we, can, we don't assume that they know each other. We say perhaps they could know each other. So um, and there's... Um, a differentiation, whether they know each other. How do you do data quality control in this manual uh, key in organization? That's a good question. On the one hand, it's a process where always two people key the same data. And if the result is the same, we assume it's correct. Because most time they do copy and paste. They go on a website, double click on first name, and copy it in the first name field, and so on. It's not so difficult. Even you don't need to speak German because you see first name, last name, and sometimes you see what is very important for us, the functions like um, CEO of Apple or of Deutsche Telekom, whatever, because we need this to match the people within the network that we don't create duplicates. And when we get this data, which are keyed in Africa, we have a data team which make um, random controls in the data and which have quite a good look, I would say, because they worked for 25 years in the Shufa environment in exactly this business. And they have a look on the data and say, this is wrong. Honestly, I don't know why they do it in detail, but they have quite a good feeling to see this is wrong. But it's done manually. I'm really deeply convinced, really good data you can't get without manual efforts. There was a, no question? No. So, and as I told you, we used that for, uh, um, right now we were quite lucky last year because we found it two years ago and last year we had quite um, the, the luck to get some good customers like Deutsche Bank, Commerzbank, Deutsche Post, RWE, so the, some of the biggest companies in Germany because they all like the idea of getting more insights into their data and so this is not really rocket science in my opinion. For them, it's voodoo and like a part, and there are huge budget for di digitalization. That's quite good for us because they think that's digitalization. Yes, and, and that's good because there are a lot of money for these, and, and compliance is good as well. This is the second topic where everybody has some money for. And um, um, that's quite good for us, and therefore we have quite different use cases. I can show you in the second, but the key use case is, of course, getting warm introductions. Yeah. I think we should show later on the system. I hope that it works because I didn't want to have PowerPoint, but the, the browser. Um, just to give you, as we are on a technical conference, a glimpse on the architecture. As I told you, we have Cassandra Key Value Store and Spark, which is our key reference database where we have all our data in. Then we have a Solar for searching, which helps us to, to search and match person and company data. We have the Neo4j graph database, and we have a Postgres, but the Postgres we only use for data quality anal analysis, because it's much easier to, to, um, to um, ask, um, show me all companies where I have not even two people in the first management level. This is on a relational database, much easier and faster and more that's the history of all of our data guys, more easy for them to get things like this. Spark is now introduced, so the more Spark is integrated in our system, then we will probably cut the Postgres. 
because then we can use all the relational requests using Spark and, and we'll cut the Postgres. And this only a weekly export. It's only for data quality measures, not for nothing else. For reporting, how many data sets do we have, how data sets, and so on. And we have a highly decoupled um, architecture, so that means we, we have a um, active MQ message broker. That means we handle all our data, every string, even if a data guy changes anything in the front end, everything creates a message. And um, the message broker is responsible for shipping the data to all the databases. And then we have um, decoupled microservices, which are all in an own container instance with an own um, Tomcat to um, where our application is divided in real small parts, which helps us a lot because um, for some use case I can tell you in a second. Um, yeah, so that's all we learned from our previous pr project which were at the um, credit bureau, which was not optimal, not decoupled, not fast, not flexible. And now we try to optimize all that. And at the moment, we're still happy with this kind of architecture. Any questions on that? So I'm not the deeply technical guy, but Yeah, because my experience shows there are always some very interesting use cases, and exactly this use case does not is not supported by this architecture, and that's therefore I honestly I'm not a fan of huge planning, plan everything for years and years because you never know what the future brings, and if there's a huge customer, somebody in the audience says, "Great, I want to have this and this. Can you do this?" And perhaps it's the first thing which is not really supported by this architecture. Perhaps, I don't know, I don't hope so. And I'm sure that we're really flexible with this approach. And many companies who saw this said, yeah, really modern approach. Um, and I really like it, but never say no. Therefore, I'm cautious. So, but I think now is the point where the browser should run. We try it again. So, it seems that it works. So, just to give you, because I wanted to show you not only slides, because I don't like only slides, just to give you an overview what the system is really doing. Um, this is just one, the key lines um, front end um, on the data, but most of the customers are now integrating the data into their system, so they are not really only using the front end, which I show you now. And very important is what my opinion is in, in, in networks like ours is the network becomes even more powerful if our public data are integrated with the customer data. That's very, very important. And therefore, I'm now logged in as one of our customers. Um, um, I'm a, can do this to show you a real, real example how they use it. Because what they gave us, they gave us um, more than 10,000 of their customers and about 10,000 of potential customers or leads which they want to get, which they want to acquire, where they haven't been successful in the last years because the um, sourcing guys always said, whenever the sales guy called, the sourcing guy of the other company said, you know, we always buy the product of your competitor. Please come next year again or two or three years or never. And they are looking for bypasses, how to bypass this single entrance point to the company of the sourcing department um, to get a food on the long term into this company. And it's not so easy with the mouse. Here in the system, I'm sorry, it's right now it's in German. Um, you're looking for persons or companies. I'm now looking for a company, and I can't show you all the functionalities now in detail, but to give you a glimpse, all the uh, rest we can do later on, or when, uh, whenever you can call me, or I can do your Skype presentation. Um, I just showed, so, and what have we done now? I'm in the key lines front, and, and now I made, sent a request to Solar and got a hit list from the Solar. And now I choose one company, this with a tag, because this is tagged by our customer. And when I click now, I get all the 
relations from the Neo4j to this company. So that means now you have a graph, which means there are always companies and people. Green companies are active companies. 10 means there are 10 relations. 6 means 6 relations. That means there should be 5 more. We will come up to this at the moment. If the lines are dotted, they are historical ones. That means, and the green ones are second management level. That means this guy was at the second management level. This guy as well, but blue means he's shareholder or owner of this company. Uh, just go with the mouse on that. And there you see he's um, personally liable owner of this company for nearly 10 years now. And they earn 2% of the shares in this company and for all the guys who do not know this company. But that's a good example because this is a typical German Mittelstand, which is probably not all the representatives at LinkedIn or whatever. They produce um, cucumbers and, and pickles. How do you, the, in the glass, with the, it's quite famous in Germany, and the customer, and it's a very interesting customer for our customer. And what they now do is, um, I just show you, if they, I click on the right mouse click and I click for the info page, now I go to the Cassandra and get an info page where you have, for example, the, uh, a number of employees, the turnover, all, all the official stuff, all the people, that's what you saw before, like which person that you see who entered when and who left the company. Then you see, for example, the industry code after a NACE. Then we have all in Germany published um, um, job offers. That's not very important, but one of our customers wanted it to have. Normally, we have the balance sheets for that company not. And you, here you have all these official mes messages from the trade register. And that's interesting. All these data are not in the near 4 j They are only in the Cassandra because we try to keep the nodes as small as possible because we've made the experience that they become really slow if there are too much data at the nodes. And therefore, we divide it. We have only those data at the node, which we really need for, for the graph operations. And if the uh, customers want some more details like this, we make a request of the Cassandra. That's why we have this um, architecture. What they do then is I click on the right mouse click. And now I make a Cassandra op, um, request, um, a Neo4j request, like get shortest path to my company. And then you see here, for example, these, and that's a, not a fake example because it's the real data, and, and, um, but it's of course a good example. <laughs> yeah, but there are some very, not, not, it works not every time, but quite a lot of times. This is our com uh, customer and they have some customers that are customers of our customer. And at this company, this, I should make the most over, he owns 69% of the shares of this company. He owns 59% of this company, and he is CEO since eight years. And, and now is the, the, the social network algorithms, and he knows this guy, just a click here on the right mouse click. He knows that because at this company, they've been both together as CEO, in the management board for 12 years. And it's dotted because they're not at the moment in a position together at a board, but historically. And now the sales guy get the task, make us an introduction to those guys. Ask those guys to introduce you there. Make us a warm introduction. And this is the new approach of making um, network sales as a company in a professional way. Just doing it systematically, every sales guy get, and just some more example. We, there are a lot of good examples I can show you. Some which are really surprising. Are there any German football fans here in the room? Ah, <laughs> do you know Alemannia Aachen? Yeah, okay, this is abgestiegen, they, they can down, that is a very traditional German football club which is now in the fourth league, so not very good anymore. And we grabbed in Africa for this company the sponsors of all football clubs, third, fourth, and fifth league in their environment. And now they have just a football club, and look, green, or orange, green, 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 green. And they see, look, all our customers are sponsors of this company. 
and they make, for example, they more and more buy business seeds and the sales guys get the task, go into that, try to come into these boards because they're our customer. That's much, much more, much more than, sense than um, sending mails, going on fairs and whatever. Make systematically network search. So um, I could show you some more fraud cases and a lot of other cases, but uh, what, perhaps what I could show you, that, because that's why we use Neo4j, if you just uh, take one of this company here over there. And now, of course, I wanted to show you the nine. I can click, browse through the network, and it's quite fast, and it will hardly any stop. That's, ah, look. And this guy who is second management level of this company is here as well. So, and you can browse through the German economy as long as you want, and you will hardly any find an end. And, um, and that's why we need Neo4j, to browse through all the graph. And that's all official data, which are everybody of you could do get by research as well. So just to give you one overview how handling data, which are quite normally available by any companies who handle company data, marketing data, whatever, if I think graph databases offer a new look on the same data and bring great insights for that. And um, yes, we love this topic. And I'm sure there will be much more use cases using graph database for the future. So I th the boys showed me that I should stop <laughs> because I could speak for hours. Um, thank you very much for your time, for your audience. Feel free to ask any questions now or later or contact me afterwards. I think the contact details should be available here anyway. Thank you very much. <laughs>